Hey, thanks for coming by. I appreciate you stopping by to check out what's going on over here. Um, we are working on our Android OBD2 application, and today we are rolling out oh some kind of new feature using live data. Just before we get to that, this is version 10021. It's available. Uh, links are below. Get on Google Play, or you can get that special link that I have here in this video. Um, okay, so what have I done here? Well. If history is any indicator, uh, I've just sort of started to implement this, and there's problems ahead, but we'll go ahead and see where we got. So I sort of just jumped in with this one. So what do we got here? We have live data. Now, what happens with live data is the car actually reports, to, to a certain degree, the PIDs that it supports, the, the parameters, the information that it can give you. So you don't have to sit there and guess. And this is what something that I was doing, like, not even a couple months ago I was just sort of oh well let me try to get this let me try to get this now I've got a little bit more disciplined here and when I come in the software will actually it's resetting but it will interrogate and get it get the PIDs and it'll develop a list of uh, PIDs now this is a sort of like what we're used to in professional nicer scanners where you can get a list and you say I want to see this you know whatever you, you make your picks and then you say go and um, Okay, so I didn't really pay attention to what I was picking, so there's not only information coming from the rail. Now, my truck is outside, I, I forgot to mention. Um, so we have, you know, you'll have units, PSI, kilometers per hour, um, nice little clear. So let's just go for something. Let's go for the temperature sensors. There's the engine. I have three on here. Now, I didn't support all the PIDs. I had to stop at some point. I wanted to, I mentioned in another video, I need to draw the circle, which is like, I wanted to do live data. I wanted to be able to show that I could, I just wanted to do freaking live data, have it implemented, and then offer it out. And, um, but what I had to do is I had to stop. Like, I, I actually have to address each one of these. It's not a ton of work doing each one, but but you do have to pay attention to every single thing, right? You you don't you don't just throw this stuff together. And basically, this list here is just a list of numbers that I get. Uh, no, it's not even a list of numbers. It's a list of bits representing numbers. Um, anyway, so let's go get the temperatures. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's the intake air temperature, and well, let's grab the fuel level anyway. Let's grab a couple of these sort of distance since they're clear, since the DTC is cleared, a number of warm ups, uh, let's ambient air temperature. That's it on the air temperatures. And let's get the relative throttle. I, I'm just, you know, you could, there's no limit on how many of these you can pick, by the way, but it will slow down. And that is a part of optimization that I need to, to implement is this is not running optimally super fast as it can be. It's running pretty decently actually see how close see, that was kind of slow right it's like don't 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 and it's going to update that fast like boom 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 you know but the more we add on there the um you know the the uh slower it's going to be um <coughs> excuse me <laughs> but anyway so there's uh there's there it is and i mean what i can sit here and talk about but there's really not a whole lot to say right let me uh pull in a video i've got here where i uh what i'm sh let me get this up let me what i'm doing here is is oops what happened what happened okay what I got here is I have uh, this video in the car and, and I have some parameters up. But if you notice here, you got the engine load. We have um, RPM. These are live numbers that when I start the car here, you'll see them fire up. And, and then you'll see the engine coolant temperature slowly creep up. And you can tell that it's not fully warmed up, but I have started it once or twice right so let me go ahead and roll that I mean, how do i run that okay so okay there it is i start up the car and you can see the mass uh, mass airflow the MAF uh, uh, sensor and the engine coolant temperature is uh i don't know if it'll change here in this short time because this is a very short video but the uh, fuel trims but etc etc i just wanted to uh uh, record, oh, there it goes. There goes the coolant temperature. 
So this thing is useful in some right. You know, I, I am I'm curious how compatible it is across the board uh, with other cars. I think that's uh, I think. Th and oh, okay. And then I stop the car, and you can see that the numbers go to zero. Fine. Very good. So basically, I, I guess there's really not. You know, I always used to say. I guess I should still say that in terms of, you know, you, you it's better to, to just present something and not talk a lot and have whatever you're presenting speak for itself. So I really can't. I mean, what what am I supposed to say, you know, to. Oh, well, I don't know what the hell you just, you know, just go with it, guys. I'm just anyway. So the refresh button, by the way, it will just do what it, what it did coming in. Right. Remember when we first came into the screen, it did basically this thing. It's building the list while it's uh, it's doing that. Right. Because the list, it has to call like a couple times, like five or six calls to get all of the PIDs, which, again, I don't support all of them. That'll be in an update. I'll, I'll add more. There's no oxygen sensor information on here. There's no reason that there's no, you know, there's not any more important than anything else that's on here. I just haven't gotten to it. If you looked at the ID numbers, you'll, well, no, these aren't even all low numbers. These were just sort of things I saw were interesting from the past. So the next step is to sort of really implement, like, really all... And this is... We're still in just real standard territory. But, you know, just... Uh, it's starting to really mimic something useful. And I've had pretty decent... Oh, okay, yeah. Intake air temperature. That's pretty warm. It's a... Yeah, I have the battery charger on there. Okay, let's let's stop this. Let me just... This is what I was doing before. It's clear. Uh, I was checking the temperatures, you know, just double checking things to make sure that they're right. Let me just grab nothing but the temperatures before I got a little off the track there, right? So there's one more ambient. Okay. And they're all, of course, a little different. Okay. 37.4. Now that's crazy, right? Because actually it's pro this is about the temperature outside this 60, this 60 degrees. I think... Uh, now, I was a little worried before I released this on my truck, but I think the computer hold freezes this while the truck is off. Uh, sort of like, you know, it, it's interesting because... All right. Well, anyway, I tested the ambient air, and it seems to be reading correctly on other cars when they're running, and the truck when it's running, but the truck's been off for a while. Uh, so some of these are reading information, and some are not. Now, what was interesting is that my Impala was giving me short-term fuel trim when the engine wasn't running. And that was odd, because usually they're supposed to go to zero. For example, in this, uh, if I do the fuel trims on this guy, let me clear everything, the fuel trims, let me see, they'll all come out to zero. But if I go out there and turn the key and start the truck, the numbers will show up like they did in the Impala. But the weird thing is when if I do the same exact thing with the Impala off, I'll see whatever the last numbers were in the in the uh, fuel trims. So that's a pretty weird thing. Now, one, one of the things I'm finding out, just with the couple vehicles I've been messing with, there is so much haphazard stuff going on in the industry in terms of how this stuff's recorded, uh, uh, developed and designed. Because here, here's another one, right? Let's, uh, let's clear this. Let's... Uh, yeah, uh, I think I have the right vehicle here. I think the truck is like all these PIDs are what the truck reported it supports. These are all throttle position and accelerator position. So let's grab let's grab that. Yeah, see, it took a little while to pull in. Um, anyway, the throttle position C. For some reason, I'm getting no data. I actually, I, I was, this was causing an error in my application, and I, I was like, well, how come I'm not getting anything for C? And I went, and I went all the way down, and it's just nothing. The, tr when the truck reports that I, I am going to give you position C, but then when I ask for position C, I get nothing. I get nothing. So this is, so I just, in my software, I just say zero. I mean, what am I going to do? I mean, I don't show PIDs that I don't get reported from the car that it doesn't support. So you get this odd case of, I, I think it's just some software developer, just like I, I hiccup things, I miss things. They say, we're going to report this PID, and then when you ask for it, it's just not there. I'm, and it's like, it's not there, like, uh, n not like a negative response, like, oh, we don't have that. It's just like, mm. you know, like when you're talking to somebody, like, like what Barack Obama did to Joe Biden, you know, it's just like, I, I'm not acknowledging that. 
Anyway, okay, let me just stay off of that, right? That was it's just let me. I just couldn't resist, man. Did you see that? Anyway, 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 back to back to work. Let's get back to work, guys. So, um, so there it is, man. Live data on the uh, the old Android app. More PIDs to come. If you want it really fast, you know. Actually, you saw the Impala video. There was. Let me see that again, uh, real quick. That video, like, the updates were pretty fast. I mean, I, I need to improve it. I can't, I, I believe I can take steps to improve it. It's definitely, uh, like, if you were in a bind and you didn't have anything but this scanner, this would, this would do it for you, you know, you could tell if you had all the PIDs, if you had, like, you know, like, things that were interesting, like your, you know, if you, somebody comes in with a lean code or something, and you want to check for a vacuum leak, you want to see your short-term, you know, your, your fuel trims, and, uh, you know, or, or maybe, um, you want to see your oxygen sensor voltages, and, you know, actually, I found the, the, the thing, okay, let me stop this, the thing that's interesting is I, I started this whole project thinking about bi-directionality, and um and actually the the and and I still have that in my in my sort of uh agenda the it's just taking me forever man um but what what's true what seems to be true and I think like you talk to like working mechanics is really what you will use the bidirectional stuff for sure but what you really what you really will use mostly and, and even in this app what's what will would be used mostly even by me because now I'm kind of getting to a point where I don't even want to buy any scanners anymore. I'll just write the damn thing myself. Is is information about what the car is doing? You know what what is not so much the RPM, right? You can hear that, but you know what, what are your fuel trims? If they're they're key to so many issues. Uh, your in your mass airflow, right? You maybe get uh, just these kind of uh, parameters. What else do we got here? Uh, well. Yeah, these are kind of, some of these are, well, it, right, the usefulness of a parameter is not in the parameter, it's like food, right, the nutrition is not in the food, it's in how you use it, right, a big bacon sandwich on a, on a 800 calorie per hour hike is a great thing, but not for me working on software at my desk, right, so, uh, what is my analogy for, what am I trying to say, I don't know, I got lost, I got lost, man, in my mind, I'm sorry, Sorry, dudes. Anyway, hopefully that'll make sense. I don't even know what I just said. I don't know what I just said, but I'm I'm committed to this video, so I haven't really screwed that up. So that whatever that was, it's staying. Um, and of course we have our our standard stuff, right? Our our DTC readings. Oh, I changed some stuff. I try to optimize some things, right? What happens is I was reporting stored codes as confirmed. They're not really confirmed. They're, I don't know what the word is, manufacturer codes or something. So what I do is I, I call them stored codes because when it says zero DTCs, it really doesn't seem right to say confirmed to the codes that you get. So I'm just leaving these codes. In. First of all, that 1,000 isn't going away for like probably another, I don't know. I don't drive the truck that much, but it's going to probably take 200 to 500 miles. I don't know what's up with that. The B1600, I think I could just clear because it keeps starting for me. That's a key code, like if the key code doesn't match. But I think that was because I was I started sending crazy data to the CPU, and the CPU I think started thinking it was being programmed or something, and I had to. St it was crazy. It was crazy, man. Uh, but you know, so we're back in normal with this, and uh, da -da -da -da. yeah, the truck is outside. Yep, yep, yep. Communications are a little slow here. What else? Uh, you know, everything else is what it was. There's nothing new in these other pages. You guys seen all this stuff. Get status. A bunch of stuff could be added here. This is kind of almost... I don't know. I get there, There's other information about this, like what OBD protocols it supports and things. We can get information, like real basic whatever. I don't know how useful this. I fi I'm finding that this is this live data is probably the most valuable part of this whole. Okay, am I talking? I am talking too much. All right, very good. So there it is, man. Links below. Grab it. Are we gonna finish? Hello. Come on. All right. You know. Let me see. All right, I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm just gonna kind of grab this. I want to bring this over closer to the window because that everything is like app. You know, everything's really slow. 
everything's like uh get, getting out can see how yeah see how it's much quicker just from moving a little bit like that what are you saying i'm insecure yeah i am i'm scared life scares me man you know and the older i get the more scared i get <laughs> All right, I, yes, yes, you. All right, nothing ever works right for me except for the stuff that I didn't plan. All right, so, so there it is. I think I talked, I definitely know I talked too much. I really appreciate you, I'm trying to speak. I really appreciate, I very much appreciate the fact that you came by to watch my video and listen to my whack I don't know what the hell I'm talking about but as a gift to you have that uh, have this app I hope it works for you and, and feel free to complain and let me know hey I got a this or that and it doesn't work with this and I'd like to know anyway okay so very good all right now I'm looking for the stop button thanks a lot for coming by I hope you have a great day summer's coming spring's coming uh uh yeah, man. Keep a positive outlook, you know? All right. See you later.